Perfect. Good thing I'm not talking about sexual things then with this one. Uh, I mean, it's, it's an 18 plus stream. I'm True. not looking at curse though. Aw. That's gonna be really that's gonna be for after the, that's gonna be for after yeah. the stream, right? That's it's about, it, it's too early it's for all, anything to really happen in the stream anyway, because it's like yeah. yeah. It's all PC other than the very last part of the video. Sounds about right. And it's all about being a good father. In Confederate America. And good night, everybody. ready for this. ready for this <laughs> I'm just gonna wait a few minutes for people to show up and chat I am just So not ready for this. So many reasons. suitable for children are those who are easily disturbed. Individuals suffering from anxiety or depression may not have a positive experience playing this game. Would you like to review detailed content warnings which contain, which contain spoilers? Of course. Alternatively, in-game content warnings can be enabled in the settings menu at any time. No! This is, this is not the first time in this rodeo. Playing Doki Doki Literature Club, you agree that you have noted the game's age rating in your region. You consent to your exposure of highly disturbing content. <laughs> I read that out loud with freaking just four girls. Two girls making googly eyes, and then the other two are just like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I agree. <sighs> I'm just waiting for like one of my parents to just come down and just be like what the, what the hell are you playing it's like I I'm playing regret
glad to see you here, Melly. Hang on. I'm gonna do one more thing. now. Oh, I'm regretting everything. Okay. And please, don't forget to share my channel. <laughs> because the more people I make a fool out of myself in front of, the more I'll be able to do. So hard. <laughs> uh, well, here we go. God. Uh. Oh fuck it. Let's just. Let's just. Let's do it. It's me. Yeah, it's Aerie. Childhood friend. Hey! I see an annoying... <laughs> Oi! Girl running toward me from the distance. Waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl's Aerie. My neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today. But it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. Keep my mouth smaller and tense in my throat. <laughs> uh, well, that's that's something to actually keep in mind. Uh, we used to walk to school together on days like this. It's turning around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. If she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. <sighs> Tense throat, eh? <sighs> huh. Overslept again. But I got you this time. Maybe. But only because I decided to stop and wait for you. Eh. You say that like you're thinking about ignoring me me and Corey. Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Right, I forgot that the pro tag did kind of leave me with a bad taste in my mouth. Fine, fine. But you didn't wait for me after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean if you, even if you want to. Whatever you say, Sayori. <laughs> Cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. Ugh. I gotta get water. I gotta need water. Hang on. <sighs>
Obligatory thirsty joke for all you assholes. <laughs> that wanted me to voice act this shit. <sighs> None of you assholes. I do appreciate everybody that comes to watch these. Just Uh. Uh. <sighs> By the way, Corey, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already, I'm really not. Bleh. Fuck. <laughs> Fail. Told you already. I'm not really interested in joining any clubs. I haven't been looking either. Eh, that's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did in one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. You are not a ladies' man, and now I'm ashamed that I named you after myself. Sarah likes to worry a little too much about me. When I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Because I am going to send this to, to my editor to, you know, edit this shit. Uh, could you do me a favor and just kind of cross out and anime? I don't watch that much anime. I have more games. Although I do watch some on occasion. Uh-huh. I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Your happiness is really important to me, you know? No. I don't know you're happy now, but I die at the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years because you're not used to the real world. Have you seen what happened to me, Sayori? I got fucked! <laughs> real world is me! And heartless! And we'll freaking shut you down! You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. Alright, alright. I'll get a few clubs if it makes you happy. No promises, though. Will you at least promise me you'll try a little? Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. Yay! How do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? <laughs> I know too much. More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. You know, seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to use her mind at least a little bit. Even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. School day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. Or he wants me to check out some clubs. Guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Hello. Sayori? Hmm. <laughs> oh, crap, I'm probably actually going to go through this faster than I thought. Hmm. Also, because I never went for it in the previous game, I am going to try and get the I am going to try and go for the coveted good ending. Although, I don't know enough of what's different in this, because I, I avoided all spoilers. I do know that there's supposed to be a good ending to this game. But, at the same time, I need to, like, just figure out what's new. <sighs> Sayori must have come to the classroom while I was spacing out. Look around and realize that I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out. So I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. Ouch. You don't need yeah, you don't you don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know. You know what? Well, 
thought you could come to my club. Sayori. Yeah? There's no way I'm going to your club. To a writing club. 65 pages, 65 pages, 37,000 words. <laughs> oh! Right! Uh, two things real quick. Um, you know what? I'll wait. Well, the second thing I'll wait. The first one is that I did actually add a new, um, reward. Uh, for the uh, for uh, the uh, brigade for brigade merit, and that and that is I will literally just spin a tail of Celosia. I've spent so much time building it, its people, its races, and all the stuff. I could probably just pull stories out of my head. Probably doesn't mean they're all gonna be great, but I probably can. I know I already have a few that are in my head, but hey. Helps me, uh, helps me come up with more lore from my world. And I made it expensive, because I realized just how many points people can get. <sighs> mm. Eh, meanie. Sayori is vice president of the Literature Club. Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. So she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, but she inherited the title Vice President. Um, below the chat, there's literally, like, a little purple circle with, like, a little, like, quarter circle inside of it. Those are the points. Uh, if you, uh, every once in a while you'll get a chest that gives you a bunch of points, but you also just get points just for watching the stream and, you know, participating. If you subscribe, you get, uh, double the amount of points. And then you can spend those points to, uh, get special little rewards from, uh, the streamer. It's just, it's just another way to help keep, uh, people involved in the stream. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less bullshit. I no, if, if I was back in high school and there was a literature club, I hundred percent be part of the literature club. Just no hesitation. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Come on, please. I don't care so much anyway. Well. I kind of told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member. And Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. <laughs> he promises he can't keep. Can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead or if she's so cunning as to have planned all of this out. Let out a long sigh. Fine. Stop by for a cupcake. Okay? Yes! Let's go! And thus... Today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. In more ways than one. I am... Why did this... Oh yeah, auto save. I'm saving here. You would sell your soul for a cupcake. I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs. A section of the school I rarely visit. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Just shut dunk! I'M HERE, BITCHES! <laughs> Everyone, the new member is here! I told you, don't call me a new member. Eh? I glance around the room.
Welcome to the Literature Club. It's a pleasure meeting you. <coughs> Sayori. <coughs> oh. think doing her voice would actually freaking wet. <clears throat> okay. Sayori always says nice things about you. Oh, her voice is going to suck. Seriously? You brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere! Ah, Cory! What a nice surprise! My female voice is so limited, I have to do four different voices. <laughs> oh, lord. I do not... <laughs> my, vo my natural vocal cord is too deep for this shit. I can... Monica, Natsuki, Sayori... I can't remember her, and she was my first pick! Damn it! Good lord. Ugh. Welcome to the club. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girl. Lovely, lovely, cute. Cute doesn't feel appropriate for the other two. There. Just so just so you see the face and not just her tits, because I know she's got the biggest set of the bunch. Yuri, thank you. <clears throat> what are you looking at? If you wanna say something, say it. S sorry. Natsuki. Hmm. A girl with a sour attitude whose name is apparently Natsuki is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes her look like a first year student. She's also the one who makes cupcakes, according to Sayori. You can just ignore her when she gets moody, Sayori says, that quietly into my ear, and turns back toward the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. D don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Ah, well, it's nice to meet <clears throat> Try that again. Ah. Well, it's nice to meet both of you. It sounds like you already know Monica. Is that right? That's right. It's great to see you again, Cory. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we already talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically, completely out of my league. Pedestal problem. So, having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... Y you too, Monica. Come sit down, Cory. We made room for you at the table so you can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Sorry, I got a little too excited. Then, how about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. As Sayori mentioned, it's been widened so that there's one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, you ready? Ta-da! Oh, I am so regretting this. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do this for the whole game. Ugh. I. Oh, it feels so awkward voice acting cutesy. It's it, it's 
not me. <laughs> uh, I have five bottles. Okay, I have the water. Oh, bloody hell. In fact, I've already frickin'... Twi 25 minute mark. Already down- already ended a water bottle. <laughs> uh. <sighs> Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. What's wrong with puppies? The whiskers are drawn with icing, and little pieces of chocolate were used to make the ears. I'm just waiting for one of my parents to just walk in while I'm doing this shit. Because the walls are paper fucking thin! I hate this! Uh, nothing makes me feel more self-conscious than this. Ah! Ah! Just having a meltdown already. We only just started. Uh. So cute! I had no idea you were so good at baking, Natsuki. <laughs> well, you know. Just hurry and take one. Sayuri grabs one first, then Monica. I follow. It's delicious! Sayuri walk... Talk... That Sayori <laughs> talks with her mouthful and has already managed to get icing on her face. That doesn't surprise me. Turn the cupcake around in my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. <laughs> no, that's no joke. It's like cupcake. Nom. Nom, nom. If it's small enough, I just freaking Kirby that shit. <laughs> just... Oh! <laughs> Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. I think it's sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. <sighs> yeah, yeah, the baka. Why are you thanking me? It's not like I... Haven't I heard this somewhere before? Yes, Baka. <laughs> Every single freaking anime Baka with a Sundere Baka. Baka, 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 Baka. <laughs> uh, I just picture just Pac-Man just going to street buddy. Going across the square and you know, they're just Baka, Baka, Baka. <laughs> Made them for you or anything. I thought you technically did. Sayori so said, Well, maybe. Not for you. Y y you know, you. I'm just saying Baka. Not, every time it's dummy, I'm just gonna say Baka. Just for you guys. Just because I know that's the meme. Alright, alright. I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri returns to the table, carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. He gave a whole tea set in his classroom? Don't worry, the tea just gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Uh, I guess. <laughs> Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. That's not... Insulted, Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know... I, I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow and smiles at me. So, what made you consider the literature club? Um... I was afraid of this question. Tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sayori seemed really happy here, so. 
That's okay. Don't be embarrassed. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member for any of the major clubs. Weren't you a leader of the debate club last year? <laughs> well, you know. But to be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. Good! Because, yeah, politics suck! <laughs> Feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. Yes. 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 And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. I am a writer. Monica really is a great leader. Harry also nods in agreement. And I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events, like the festival, that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah! We'll do our best. You know it! Everyone enthusiastic agree enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have really worked hard just to find these three. Monica found them! Sayori is the one that's holding everyone together! Literally the glue of this group! Maybe that's why they were all so delighted by the idea of a new member joining. Though I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So, Cory, what, ki what kinds of things do you like to read? Well, uh... Considering how little I've read this pa these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga. No matter quietly to myself, half-joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. Yep, there it is. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. N not much of a reader, I guess. Oh, well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Here he goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I have been reading a lot of horror lately. Eh, I read a horror book once. I desperately grasp something I can relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you, I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think, or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. I actually thought that was one of my parents for a moment there! It's like, you? No? Okay. <laughs> the horror started. The horror is already... The horror started it! <laughs> Yeah, I'm randomly gonna have Monica frickin' come out my door into my room and frickin' jump me. Because she's so lonely. Because God... Uh, <laughs> it's like, I don't agree with what she does, but at the same time, it's like... Ah! <sighs> Ugh. 
it's just the fact that she's talking about this, it's like, this is such a relevant conversation. <laughs> Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Uh, I hate horror. Oh, why's that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right. I usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? That? <laughs> and my voice tried to default. <laughs> what gives you that idea? I left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called Don't Say It Out Loud! Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's gonna be the hardest for me. saying that. The instant regret saying that. Oh, yeah, there's... there's mm, for the viewers! Uh, for all two viewers. Oh. Right. Right, right, right. Okay. God, it feels like I'm gonna have to squeak this. <laughs> oh, it feels weird. Oh, it feels weird. I, well, I mean, it gives me practice, at least. Oh, Lord. Goddamn fucking Natsuki fuel. Because <laughs> mm. I can just, I can feel it like right here, like the my lower esophagus, <laughs> just like, what are you doing to me? <laughs> mm. Don't say it out loud. Give that back. Yeah. Fine. Fine. Your cupcakes, your poems, everything you do is just as cute as you are. Siri so saddles up by Natsuki and puts her hands on her shoulders. There's ship material! Ship. I'm not cute! Natsuki, you write your own poems? Eh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? Say Suki for love. Yeah, there it is. Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Eh, not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Yep. Yeah. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you can share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. <laughs> that face says everything. I guess it's the same for Yuri. Aww, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay, I have an idea, everyone. Hmm? Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then, next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Uh, um... Natsuki and Yuri, literally the polar opposites. I don't know. 
I mean, on the, on the one hand, knowing what I do know, it it be possible, but I don't know if it be the greatest of relationships. Simply because, like, she's she's a bit kind of like too energetic uh, for her, and I'm not saying that that kind of relationship can't work. It's just I don't know it. It, it, I can see it being fun for people to ship, but I don't see it work. I don't think I would be able to write that if I had to. Excuse me. Yeah, let's do it! Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Corey? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on. Still one problem. Eh? Well, what's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Sayori may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and... Um... Yeah, that's... This is evil. <laughs> it just... This is evil! <laughs> I don't care who you are, when you have four girls all stare at you like you literally just, like, denied them... Denied them the last cupcake. It's like... Oh... <laughs> No, that's actually relatively fair. Yeah. Yeah, actually... Saying that, it actually would be healthy for them. <laughs> just... All four of them. Honestly, she's just like... Like, if I, if I had to pick a face that feels the most disappointing... It's like a toss-up between Natsuki and Monica. Or not Natsuki. Sayori. Then. That's Natsuki. Her face almost already looks like it's glitching to me. And I hate it. All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. <laughs> Even Monica is just looking like... So heartbroken. <laughs> like, mmm. But. I'm sorry, I thought. Hmm. Corey. You all. Uh, that's not fair. That is evil. I'm defenseless against these girls. Because this is evil! How am I supposed to make a clear head decision when it's like this? Evil! <laughs> that is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. And there's thinking with your dick. <clears throat> Sorry, no, I have to do this. Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girl's eyes light up. <clears throat> I'm gonna need more water bottles by the end of this, I swear to God. Yes! I'm so happy! Sayori wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey, hey! You really did scare me for a moment. If you really just came for the cupcakes, I wouldn't be super pissed. And that makes it official. Welcome to the Literature Club. Uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remembers tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. 
Monica looks over at me once more. Cory, look forward to seeing how you express yourself. <laughs> y yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit chat as Yuri and Atsuki. Fucking door opened. <laughs> my f <laughs> my door just opened. <laughs> I would just give her a damn hug. Seriously, she needs it. Oh, I don't run. <laughs> Melly, you have not seen enough of my streams to know me well enough. I don't run. I'm that insane person that stands my ground. Unless there is absolutely zero hope. Then I book shit. But until that point comes, I stand firm. <laughs> Cory, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right. Siri and I never walk home together anymore because she always stayed after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. Yay! <clears throat> With that, the two of us depart the club room and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and, of course, Monica. Would I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Me? Yes! For the literature. The girls is a bonus. Perhaps I'll have the chance to go closer to one of these girls. Alright. I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances. I'm sure good fortune will find me. I guess it starts with writing a poem tonight. Yeah, a uh, favorite climber will like something good uh, might happen with whoever likes your poem the most. <sighs> yeah, and there is no. All right. Yeah, let's start. <laughs> eh. Really? I want the girl that's actually wearing a ribbon. And to be fair, I'm actually gonna go ahead for uh, Sayori first. Landscape. Natsuki. What? Oh, it's oh, it's twenty words now. I thought it's twenty words. Okay. Jeez, I thought it was ten. Hey, uh, what? 
spend enough time during the poem minigame for the music to loop. How? What? Hold on! <laughs> Sorry, look at the achievement! So close, start a new game. Hold up! <laughs> I... This is a new game! How do I not have that achievement when the achievement is start a new game? Hawaii. Peaceful. Ooh, night game. I don't see Nikon as cute as a cute thing. Yeah, I should have expected that one. Effulgent? Eh, what <sighs> You know what, actually, what I think would be interesting is if the game... Is if this actually, like, picked up the files of the previous game. It's just like, oh, hey, you played this before. Hmm. Hi again, Corey. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. <laughs> eh, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but I at least keep my word. Oh, well, I'm back here at the Literature Club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Corey. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on! Lucky deserves any slack. They already told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too! I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. <laughs> Natsuki finds herself stuck between <laughs> saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature! Swiftly defeated, Natsuki falls back into her seat. To be fair, it is. Like, I will agree with her on that. Don't worry, guys. Tori always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. He helps me with busy work without me even asking. Aye! 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 I am not the maid! I am not the maid! No! Like cooking and cleaning my room. How dependable. Sari, that's because your room is so messy it's distracting. You almost set your house on fire at once. Is that so... <laughs> no! 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 You two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. Oh, come! Me and Cory can become good friends, too! Uh, um... Sayori! Hmm? As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh! Oh! Yuri even brought you something today, you know? Oh, wait, Sayori... Eh, me? Um, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? N never mind. It's already made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Ooh, what do I do? Eh, I'm sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue the situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place, so any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Is that so? Yeah. Don't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. Alright. Oh, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it, if you wanted. This is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? 
That's because she's shy. And also, hello, Dash. Welcome to me making an absolute fool of myself trying to voice act four freaking girls. <laughs> With, of course, enough damn fluids for the obvious thirsty joke. This is going to bug my damn throat. Ugh. She even picked out a book she thinks I li like, despite not me. She even picked out a book that she. she She even picked She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. I don't have enough spaces for the Oh, wait, 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 wait. I know the perfect demo for this. That's a warning, Melly. <laughs> yes, this is water in these bottles. And nothing else. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. So Yuri and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. Looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slumped down to the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me. I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I closed my eyes and ended up listening in on Sayori's conversation with Monica. We're probably gonna seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Hmm? Well, we can't give up. Festival is our chance to show everyone li what literature is all about. The problem is that the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not all like that at all, you know? We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds. Mm. That doesn't solve the problem, though. Eh? What do you mean? Even if we come with, uh, up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in the first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds. This Yuri's taking this really seriously. It's rare to hear her del deliberating like this. Huh, that's a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? W what kind? Well, I guess we could. Cupcakes! <laughs> good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. Ah, you're right! Natsuki makes the best cupcakes! That works out perfectly! That wasn't why he's. That wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. No. <laughs> Cupcakes. No. 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 <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Cupcakes it is then. I'm hungry. <laughs> 
donuts. <laughs> anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. I find myself smiling. In the end, Sayori is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason why I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Sayori can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Hi! <laughs> I'm my space, Sayori space filling my vision. Just, hi! Wasn't ready! I <laughs> need fall out of my chair. <laughs> sorry! Wait, actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't the napping club. Does our school have a napping club? You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know? You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see a Monica over here, overheard. It's true, though. Yeah. I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. <laughs> it's what I do best. That's ah, a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. Relatable! You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Eh, not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... It's a secret! I knew it. Come on! Please give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. <laughs> Look, Sayori, it's written all over you. Eh? Sayori glances around at herself. How's it written all over me? You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all around here. Uh... I run my fingertips down the side of Sayori's hair, trying to straighten it out. <laughs> oh, that's actually relatable. Every when I wake up in the morning, I have to comb my hair; otherwise, my hair is just. I hate it. Just wake up in the morning with a freaking devil horn out coming up the side of my head. You really need a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. It's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. There's a toothpaste stain on your collar right here. Try to wipe off the stain with my finger. But, but nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's gonna tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Unfortunately, I really don't care about that! <laughs> hey, you meanie. You don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have a boy? Oh. Ooh. Eh. That's super mean. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. No! <laughs> Start to button her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. No, it just... Bro! Bro! There are things you say, and there are things you don't say. Especially in public! <laughs> that is one of them! I mean... Okay, to be fair, yes, I can understand why people wouldn't necessarily approach someone who isn't all, who doesn't look all that collected, but saying it like that is not the way you say it. <laughs> this is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kinds of things. Eh? Don't say that. Don't make me feel weird about it, stu- No, Baka is, is strictly for Natsuki. Don't make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? 
Uh, I, I guess. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her chair. Gee! Why is this button so hard to close? <laughs> Fit you properly? <laughs> it did when I bought it. Breasticles. Ah. <sighs> you ever buttoned it, you have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? I'm doing this for free and simply because somebody asked me to. I was asked to do this! And therefore I was asked to speak this line! For the viewers! <sighs> I mean... right above me, which is making me freaking conscious. <sighs> Minimum three hours! again. Don't say that out loud. <laughs> anyway, you look much better now, so... Ah. Why does it feel strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that? It's so stuffy. Mm. It's not worth it at all. Sayori hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Phew. That's so much better. I mean, it's too small for you. Obviously, it's gonna be freaking pressing down on you. Sayori puts her arms out and twirls around. So if you keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying that like it's a good thing? And, yep, there it is. Yes. Uh, I got the one there, and I got the one that I just threw behind me, because I am... Killing myself because I got asked to voice act this bloody game, which is populated by nothing but girls. And you're complaining about that? It's first of all, it's not the first time I played this game, but they had they had to re-release it with all new content. So it's like great. I've already streamed this before, and I have to do it a second time. I don't. <sighs> I hate my dad sometimes. Okay, that's fair, yes, the main character isn't one. Main character is a dude because they're supposed to be the the self-insert. Shitty self-insert. <laughs> but yeah. <clears throat> because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. Depends on the relationship. 
and you take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. So that's why I keep it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. Eh, I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine, fine. It's a deal. To be fair, that kind of actually sums up my relationship with Pub. We kind of... We look after each other better than we look after ourselves at times. <laughs> I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are at taking care of ourselves. But they just said that. Yeah, I guess so, huh? So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Aw, but I was joking that time. It's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Yeah. Monica suddenly calls out. Just, hi! <laughs> Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! Corey, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I fell to sound enthusiastic. <laughs> Sayori still trots away to retrieve her poem. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Y yeah. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I didn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? Sorry, just like, if, if I knew how to like, tweak, um, freaking um, Streamlabs, I would like, every time it says that, every time I have it that it says I'm not a not interested in writing or not a good writer in this, I would just have like pages of the liter literature I've written just kind of like sail across the screen. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, I don't know what to write. Pages upon pages upon pages of, you know, Solosia. <laughs> One of my rewards is literally just, I will make a story on the spot about Solosia verbally. Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori's is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Who should I show my poem to first? Sayori! As you know. Let's do some science. Monica first. Uh, I should start with Monica. Yesterday she seemed eager to read my poem, and I wanted to know I'm putting in effort. Hi, Corey. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good. Glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring things up. Pussy. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, wanna share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Corey. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's that sort of barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Hmm. I like this one. It makes me something... It makes me think of something Sayori would like. Is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had these sort of things in common. Well... We may be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Hmm. Well, that may be the case. But maybe there are also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you. It sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you'd think. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. Hmm. Sure you're not reading it into it too much? <laughs> I could be. Oh gosh, it sounds like Yuri. But in any case, Sayuri's writing has kind of a gentle feel to it. I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions, like happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone so happy would enjoy sad things, too? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. I know why! 
Well, to each their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit, either. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It'll take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. You think there'd be a thing where it's like, if you do a run where you do like one of each? Because it's three poems before uh, the day. You think if you do like one of each and it's like you literally act experiment with the three different styles, uh, it's like that's the best way to like appeal to Monica? Which would kind of make sense, really. Because she's the only one that you can't focus on. So it's just like, but she says, like, I want you to experiment. Okay, do one of this, one of this, and one of this. The trifecta. She's the triforce. <laughs> Everyone else might be a little bit biased with their own kinds of styles. But I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. <laughs> anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. So I'm pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole in the wall! It couldn't have been me. No, wait, I should... Yeah, the hell with it. Hole in the wall. It couldn't have been me. See? The direction the... Spackle? Spackle? Spackle protrudes. Spackle. Why spackle? An noisy neighbor? An angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel, blind, like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas are already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep, stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. Hi, Monica! <laughs> so, what do you think? Hmm. It's very freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the time between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Uh, well, I'm not sure how to put it. I guess you could say I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that, because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem, or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. Yep! If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper, and tidy it up later. That's exactly what I am doing with my rough draft of Celosia. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big, dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Alright. And Sayuri. Just go down the line at this point. Oh my goodness! This is so good, Cory. Eh? I love it! I had no idea you were such a good writer! Yori, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. Honestly, I have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. <laughs> Jeez. 
I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even Natsuki's. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of pe other people, you know? So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a Cory poem! And that makes it feel extra special. I can feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs the sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. <laughs> I'm really happy just that you wrote one. <laughs> it just reminds me of how you're really a part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Er, well, of course. Not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean it'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Cory. Deep down, you're not as sel you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying to do things like this for other people. That's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. But again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing, that, knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah, and I'm going to make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That will be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm going to hold you to that then. Yay! Now, you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> we'll see about that. Hey. Dear Sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, make me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever, but I'm not mad. I want breakfast. Sayori. This is just a guess, but... Did you wait until morning to write this? No! Just a little bit. Can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. At least that makes me feel a little better about myself. Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It came out nice. Or, how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially that last line. I made eggs and toast! Even though you were late to school. It's bad to skip breakfast! Yes! Don't skip breakfast! Most important meal of the day! I get all cranky. Speaking of poems, and poetry, and pup, I love... So... Dad already came in and took the water water bottles away, but... I, mate, I walked in here for the five water bottles for the obvious thirsty joke! Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Although, really, the reason why I need the water bottles is that voice act... The three I can manage. Natsuki is going to frickin' wreck my throat. Melly? No! Fluffy, I know you're gonna be seeing this after! Don't you fucking dare either, because I know what I'm saying, I know what I'm lighting myself up for! No! No! Yeah. I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. <laughs> this was so much fun. Monica's the best. Uh, yeah. But next time, I won't forget. Now I'm gonna write the best poem ever. <sighs> yeah.
You know what? As much as I appreciate it and would absolutely 100% love you to do that, I'm going to keep rolling with it on my own. Because, no, it is not going to be a dedicated Doki Day. I just want to blitz through this. I am not setting down a dedicated day for this. I am just going to blitz through this as quick as I can. Well, quick as I can. Because I am going to get the good ending. Because I never did that for the previous version. I'm going to do that for this version. Only because knowing what the good ending is and how you got it in the previous run and knowing what the normal ending is. Just like, no, I... I that one is something that I owe more to myself. So this is the perfect excuse for it. I'm, uh, I'm not going to go for the good ending in the first run. I'm just going to play it normally. Second run, I'm going to go for the good ending, which is going to take work. Well, I'm... what? <clears throat> Psychological horror, not jump scare horror. No, they're eating it. Well, I guess I look forward. Well, I guess I look forward to it. All right. Uh, eh, we'll do Netsuki. Look, well, yeah, just go down the line. What I <clears throat> Try that again. Well, it's about what I expected from someone like you. That's a little blunt. Well, excuse me, princess. I had to! It's not like I said it was bad. It just didn't evoke any emotions. So basically, it's not cute enough for your tastes. Do you want to get smacked? I'll pass. Well, anyway, I guess I need to show you mine. Not that you like it. I'm glad she has the shortest ones for this voice. <laughs> Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. People can try. But that's about it. Yeah. I told you that you weren't going to like it. Yeah, but this this isn't this isn't a game where I'm playing a character wandering around uh, a freaking haunted house. This is a visual novel. Two entirely different beasts. So yes, you can put jump scares into this game. It's not the main thing. The main thing is the psychological horror and the story that Yuri explicitly talks about at the start of this game. Like, god damn! Read between the lines! I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because! Everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly! I like when it's easy to read, but hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. That is... Yeah. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. I guess it... Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then it made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went, more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro! I'm glad you learned something. I didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. 
I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. And Yuri. Mm hmm. Yuri stares at the poem. A minute passes, more than enough time for her to finish reading. Um. Oh! Sorry. I forgot to start speaking. Um. It's fine. Don't force yourself. I'm not. I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on. Okay. This is your first time writing a poem, right? Er. Yeah. Why do you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess that it might be after reading through it. Eh, so it's that bad. No! Did I just raise my voice? Oh, I'm so sorry. Mary buries her face in her hands. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we really haven't gotten anywhere. It might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. It's fine. I really didn't notice. What were you saying? Right. Um... It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most notable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her, her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice, and learning by example, and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little bit biased, though. Biased? How? Uh, um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily, as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Ghost under the... L oh, Lord, that's right. <laughs> she writes in cursive. <laughs> Okay. Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe. Calm. Breathing air of the present but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. I'm sorry, I have such terrible handwriting. Girl! Fucking! Are you kidding me? That's like freaking pristine! The queen would put a stamp on that writing! Good god! What? I wasn't thinking that at all! But he took you a long time to read. Uh, well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. And I'll be honest, since the first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Cory. Really? I've totally missed the point. No, it's her because of the hair. Because she's shy. And I wanted to. First time through this, I wanted to give her a hug. Because she's just, like, so shy. And it's just like, girl, you need some confidence. Well, 
I suppose you did only glance over it, after all. Remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost, lingering in our last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past. Yes, yes, I know. I was one of those people. I was the shy one at school. <laughs> Even though I'm the one that can also get up on stage and grandstand! But I turned out to be really, sh really shy. Which is a really funny kind of... <laughs> yeah. And soon to be left with nothing. It's a lot more solid putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's nothing, really. Well, it makes me happy that you think that. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things, too. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. Phew. Leaving. I'm not leaving! What do you mean? <laughs> I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. What? What are you talking about, Jasper? I'm a little more stressful than I anticipated. As if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even though they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, after all. What? Okay, ja Jasper, you've just, like, the, le the left field. The absolute left field. <laughs> like, what? I don't even- what? Okay. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Yup. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. Oh, Lord. What's with this language? Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Uh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh. Me have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. And that's why I didn't go for Natsuki the first time around, because, ugh. Um, well, I do have a couple suggestions. Hmm! If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it. And Cory did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me, I appreciate the offer, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. Mm. Sorry, she's right in that one. It's like, you don't, like, oh hey, two people liked it, that means mine is superior, I'm going to, stop. No. No. <laughs> you don't do that. And Cory liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Matsuki suddenly stands up. Right. Uh, 
And just Q Undyne's theme. Oh! I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Eh? That's not what I... You're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Cory appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh? And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Oh. Uh, um... Is everyone okay? Oh. Toxicity. Well, you know what? I wasn't the one who's... <laughs> yeah, there it is. I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew the si a size bigger as soon as Cory started showing up. <laughs> no, now it's... Now fuck. <laughs> Natsuki? Um, Natsuki, that's a little... <laughs> Just both of them. This doesn't involve you! I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls turn towards me as if they've just noticed I was standing there. Oh no! Don't no! 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 Oh lord! Cory, she's trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point in making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out at the reader, not forcing that to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Cory! W wait there's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also... <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. It's also a waste. You understand that, right, Cory? But it! <laughs> Um, well, how did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. If I'm very agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. So, of course, it's going to be. Say, I help! <laughs> it's just. No! No! I am not! Just. Say, I help! <laughs> SOS! <laughs> Natsuki! That's who declares at me drying up any words I had in my mouth. So instead I turn to Yuri. Yuri! Yuri's expression is so defenseless that I can't bring myself to say anything to her. Say Yuri! <laughs> eh? Yeah! Everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable! Just. Like what you're doing! <laughs> How can the two of you keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel like this? Cory, well, that's her problem. This isn't about her. I, I agree. It's unfair for others to interject their own feelings into our conflict. Yeah, unless Sayori wants to tell Yuri what a stuck-up jerk she's being, she would never. It's your immaturity that's made her upset in the first place. Excuse me? Are you listening to yourself? Are you listening to yourselves, period? This is exactly why... Exactly why nobody likes... STOP! Natsuki! Yuri! You guys are my friends! I, I just want everyone to get along and be happy! My friends are wonderful people! And I love them because of their differences! Natsuki's poems! They're amazing because they give you so many feelings with just a few words! And Yuri's poems are amazing because they paint beautiful pictures in your head! Everyone's so talented! So why are we fighting? Be because well Also! Natsuki's cute and there's nothing wrong with that! And Yuri's boobs are the same they all are the same as they always were. 
Big and beautiful. <laughs> and here's the other that just wants to fuck everyone. <laughs> I did say it, Nelly! Theory. Theory stands triumphantly. Monica stands behind her with a bewildered expression. Um, make some tea. Yuri rushes off. Matsuki sits down with a blank expression on her face, staring at nothing. So, this is why Sayuri is vice president. I whisper to Monica. She nods in return. To be honest, I might come off as a good leader and I can organize things. I'm not very good with people. I can't even bring myself to interject. As president, it's kind of embarrassing of me. <laughs> nah. It's not like I can blame you. I wasn't able to say anything either. Well, I guess that just means Sayori is amazing in her own ways, isn't she? You could say that. She might be an airhead. Sometimes it's really suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. I see. Take good care of her, okay? I would hate to see her get herself hurt. That makes two of us. You can count on me. Monica smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to knock. Such a gen genuine person really does make a good president regardless of what she says. You hear me, Monica? Genuine person, because you're not planning anything, right? 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 If only you could get a chance to talk to her a little more. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How do you all feel about drinking poems? It was a lot of fun. I'd say it was worth it. It was alright. Well, mostly. Corey, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you'll learn something from your friends, too. So your poems are turning out even better. I think to myself. I need to learn a little more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job pressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Corey! Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. Siri <laughs> beams at me. It truly has been a while since Siri and I have spent this much time together. Can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Siri? About what happened earlier. Eh? Well, what do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. Does that thing happen often? No, no, no! That's really the first time we've seen them fight like that. Welcome back, love. I promised you're both wonderful people. You d don't... You don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. No, okay. Nah, I'm gonna go... Not make the first one to go run. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. Phew. You know, Corey... It's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club, but I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you, too. That's... <laughs> Every day is going to be so much fun. <sighs> Looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but... Does it really need to stop there? We'll just have to see what fortune... Future... <laughs> we'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. Pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay! Yeah, let's do this. Okay, poem. Passion. What? <laughs> what? Passion! Anger! Emotion! Natsuki! Hold up! <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Why is anger in that Suki? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I, 
What? I don't <laughs> I need to be right back. I need to go to the bathroom. I've almost gone through three water bottles. I need, I need Okay. <sighs> Another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Corey. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. Well, that's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. I guess there's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh, that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh, eh, why that? All of a sudden. No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Uh, uh. Sayori nervously retrieves her current purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then, she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. It's not fair! How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming into the- If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I will lend you some. There's one more thing. You're always hungry! And so that only leaves the one option. Ah, I give up. You make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Uh, I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri, tell Cory to let me borrow some money. Don't be evil. That's. Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, 
should only buy what you can responsibly afford. Thank you. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Uh, did I just... I, I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. Oh. <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. You need to do that more. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and I had to accept the revolution. Retribution. That! Still, coming from you, Sayori, I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but, you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori <laughs> in the face and tumbles onto the desk. What? Oh, Lord, I have to do this. I have to do the frickin' Ah, uh, the high pitch frickin' sound effect. Oh. <laughs> My knee's recovering. Still pretty gashed up, but... It's coming along. Actually, it's been a long time since I've actually had anything like it. And just, just for context for everybody else, I tripped <laughs> on the pavement in shorts. <laughs> what? <laughs> Babe, I'm sorry, what? For the record. <sighs> Fuck. Oh, it's the frickin' daddy thing off of Chrono Trigger all over again. glad Sapphire isn't here because I know 100% Sapphire would just pop into the voice channel and just do it. It's like, don't, it's like, no. <sighs> I feel like I have to repeat myself when I say this, that I'm doing this for absolutely no money, no bits, or anything, simply because I was asked by one of my viewers. Not even my girlfriend asked me to do this, simply my viewers. Because I want to be an entertainer for people.
That was like a key, uh. <laughs> I didn't do the key. You know what? That's the best I got. Just live with that, okay? I wait. I went and tried. I went and tried it, okay? Just live with that, please. Okay, we could. Please. God, if Tyler was seeing this right now, he'd probably just be shitting himself laughing. Oh, right, there's a delay between... Right, there's a delay between when I do it and... Right. <sighs> I'm... At this point, I'm just waiting for, like, someone to say, like... Good enough. You know, I'll take that. <laughs> Ow! What was... Hey? A, a cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sari glances around. Uh, is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. <laughs> Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> Thank you for the bits. Uh, I was just gonna give it to you, but then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> Natsuki! That's so nice of you! Just ignoring the fact that she got slapped in the face with a cookie, just... <laughs> just the gingerbread man from Shrek. <laughs> Shame on you! <laughs> I'm so happy! Zeri hugs, hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. So he really rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. Boom! <laughs> so good! Mmm! Sayori so suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue! <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez! Beggars can't be choosers! But yours is chocolate! Yeah? Why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Siri gets out of her seat and goes behind the key, then wraps her arms around her. What? Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in hand, and Suki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Um. Yeah, there it is. Siri suddenly leans down and takes a bite of that Suki's cookie. Yeah, there it is. Uh, hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Sari trots away to safety. Run away! Run away! <laughs> Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ah! Uh, where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. What? Hmm. <clears throat> Voice drop. Ugh. Seriously, doing her voice is gonna be painful. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular, after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Don't sell yourself short, girl. <laughs> That's true. Don't sell yourself short! 
Yeah, she's got the right attitude. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. What held you up, anyway? Uh, well, my last period was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it, since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Yes, I would, actually. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Cory. Monica smiles sweetly. Eh, I don't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? Not, not really. Choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. Looks like everyone else has already settled down. Sayori has somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Cory! Cory! Sayori suddenly comes up to me. I'm gonna go get some supplies from another classroom. Wanna come with me? Supplies? What for? Well, you know how the festival is coming up. Me and Monica were gonna make some posters and stuff. So I need to go find some crayons and markers and glue sticks. Ah, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! Okay, Monica, we'll be back soon. Ah, are you going with Cory to get the supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'd be happy to go with him. Aw, but I wanted to go. It's so much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. Yes, exploring empty classrooms on your own with a cute girl. <laughs> okay, okay. It was just a suggestion. See if you can find poster paper too, okay? Okay! Ready, Cory? Yep, let's go. Sayori and I exit the clubroom. Follow behind as Sayori hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, feels like I'm taking a kid to the mall or something. Sayori finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey, Sayori. What exactly were we doing for the festival, anyway? I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. <laughs> Me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yep! We're gonna do a poetry performance! A performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone is gonna take turns on stage and recite their favorite poems. Ah, that sounds... Weighted drugs. Kind of dull. Cory, you're not thinking about it the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems. It's about performing them. Like, you say the lines of the poem, like... Between my feet, the last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots, caressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to what ends have I summoned this joy? For now, when I look in every direction, the once prosperous field before me is but a barren wasteland. Like that! Sayori... How do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Eh? You meanie. I'm working super hard on this, you know? I know, I know. Yeesh. 
Sorry, I'm just, just kind of shit. Like, yeah, just, just, literally, she just gave me another poem. But because I know about her, it's just like, I knew what the means. <laughs> Uh. All right, way to drugs. Which isn't really anything to really... Nope. Oh. Camera doesn't angle. I cannot angle it up. Yeah, weighted shrugs is exactly what it looks like, three. Or it sounds like. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. 14, 15, 16, <laughs> I'm actually feeling my shoulders doing this, 19, 20. meant that it's a pretty unordinary contrast to your cute self. <laughs> Don't say that, it's embarrassing. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. It's a warning, my bro. Uh, I'm so excited. The festival is going to be so much fun. Sayori so spins herself around in the hallway again. Hey, Cory, this classroom over here is empty. Let's begin the mission. The mission, eh? This <laughs> the mission, eh? Like seriously, come on. It's been a long time since I spent time with Zayori like this. In the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine, drawing happy vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As years went by, I began to hold myself up in my room more and more. So going adventuring with Sayori brings about a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. Two of us enter the classroom. Sayori heads straight to the closet, and I follow. Let's see what we have in here. Crayons! Sayori pulls out a box full of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand, too! They're kind of dirty, though. Sayori starts pulling various crayons out of the box, reading the color names. Alright. That's one, that's one down. That's me. There! Don't get distracted, we still need to find... Wait, I'm looking for my favorite color. Fine, fine. But at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. Ah, I dropped one by accident. Smack. <sighs> really? Already? Bloody soon. Oh yeah, by the way, babe, if you hadn't noticed, I added a new uh, reward tier for my points. Ugh. Doing it the one time did not make it easier. Kind of. A short one. God, I regret this. Uh. <clears throat> <clears throat> hmm. 
Sari bends over and smacks her forehead right into the shell. Oh, I've been there. She falls to the floor and the crowns spill all over her lap. You okay? My forehead. Sari clutches her forehead. Jeez, Sari. That's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. Since Sari is sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. You have to move your hand, Sari. But it hurts. Let's do it for a second. Sayori slowly releases her hands from her forehead. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Ow. Sorry. There's a huge red mark on the center of her forehead. The bump is starting to form as well. And that's gonna swell up. Should find you some ice. Sayori. What did I even find ice around this time? I guess a cold drink would do. I don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, that's pretty good. Okay, I've not, I've not done her route, so there are still some things that I don't know about. I have not 100 percent this game. So yeah. Even once in from the pain, Siri makes a silly joke. <laughs> what are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? Uh, okay. I pass area on the shoulder and run out into the hallway. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? It doesn't really matter since it'll be used as an ice pack rather than a drink. But I know Siri likes apple juice, so I purchased that one. In just a moment, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Sayori. She has one palm on her forehead and is using the other to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. At least they were already in the wrong spots before I spilled them. Sayori, here. And Sayori, the bottle of apple juice. That looks more like iced tea. It's nice and cold. Sayori opens the cap and starts drinking from it. Sayori, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, idiot. Ah, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> How hard did you hit your head? Sayori places the bottle against the bump on her head. It stings. Just bear with it. It'll feel better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. Hey, Cory. This kind of reminds you of growing up, doesn't it? Eh? What do you mean? You know how we used to play outside all the time? I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways. Like I usually fell behind or had trouble climbing on the things you did. Sometimes when I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump. I would start crying really hard. <laughs> and you would rush over as quick as you could. You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Even though it really wasn't your fault at all, you know? Did I really do that? Yeah. You don't remember? Come to think of it. Maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always so focused on my games that I didn't pay enough attention to you. So in a way, it was my fault. Kind of like this time, too. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. Corey, I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years. You're rushing to help me, even though I'm just being clumsy. You really are- you're really a sweetheart. Don't call me that! I don't really- do this kind of thing all the time. Dude! Take it! Take it like a man! <laughs> you have a girl calling you a sweetheart! That's a compliment! Don't act like you're embarrassed! Like, come on, man! I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you've been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right. Corey. I'm so glad that nothing's changed between us. Do you think it'll be like this forever? Forever. 
If I'm honest to myself, there's no telling where we'll end up. Well, we'll each end up for college, or after that. So it wouldn't be fair for me to make any promises. But, well, I hope so. It's been like, it's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. Sayuri has a whimsical expression in her eyes. She remains silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should get back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know? Good luck with that. She's gonna see your forehead either way. Not if I hide it under my bangs. Sayori hops to her feet. Uh -huh. She clutches her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. Mm -hmm. Oh, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. Follow Sayori out of the classroom. Sayori plays with her bangs to try and hide the bump. But uh, without much success. In a moment, we may get back to the club room. Ah, you're back! Good timing! I was just about to- I was just about ready to start with sharing our poems. Yeah? Sayori, your forehead. She's fine. Don't worry about- I was playing with the crayons! <laughs> Out with it! <laughs> I was playing with the crayons and smacked my forehead into the shelf! Well, anyway, were you able to find everything we needed? Uh-huh, I have it right. Eh? Sayori frantically glances around herself. I... I forgot all the stuff! Calm down, Sayori. I have it all right here. I found the poster paper, too. <laughs> Sounds like you ended up doing all the work, Cory. Ah, well, Sayori... I failed to come up with an excuse for Sayori. She did find the crayons! I made an adventure! Yeah. That. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too! Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poems? Yes, I should grab mine. If you're making sure the crayon box is closed tightly, I return to my seat. Alright. Same thing, Monica first, then down the list. Hi again, Cory. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that, as long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure. Here you go. Get my poem to Monica. Right? It's pretty good. Makes me think of Sayori, like the other one that you wrote. You two are like the dynamic duo. <laughs> uh, it's kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. But you do spend a lot of time with her, even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I I'm not shy, it's just... <laughs> I'm teasing. I know it takes a bit of time to make friends with everyone. But Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people. So don't be afraid to give them a, to give them their share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then, too. I'm not, like, unapproachable or anything, am I? I? No, it's nothing like that. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah. I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. No, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, alright. But anyway. You want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust, an endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Ray. Hmm. Huh. More abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I 
guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. Hang on. Is there a, is there a back button? I feel like, okay, I gotta be doubling back anyway. But, I kinda wanna try something. I feel like I should try something. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I never really seen before, I guess. I kinda like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. Guess it can. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as the physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game! You never know when you might change your mind. Sorry! It's just, no, that is... Fourth wall, just... And there it is. And so it's like, and... Yeah. I want something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What are you even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. All right, Sayori. Cory, I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. Eh, not hiding anything. But your poems are so good. Yesterday's and this one too. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean, you're really the only one who feels that way, so... Eh? Way. Not even Natsuki? Well, I guess Natsuki is the least likely to admit how much he likes something. But I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Eh? <laughs> well, well. Stop thinking weird things, idiot. I just mean that you're a really expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking! Let's not talk about that! <laughs> so, yeah. I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings through you than I can through myself. We have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting in my business all the time. Eh? I don't know if I understand. <sighs> you never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Sayori? I pass it here his head. <laughs> hey! I'm a kid, you know. Sure about that? Mm, maybe? Sari starts fiddling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, Cory. Will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Huh? Why? Because, well, it's the first time you've written something for me. Sari, you're completely misunderstood! I didn't write this for you! <laughs> uh, are you even listening anymore? Oh, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. Really? Snap. Uh, uh, broke my pencil. Sari hastily bends down to pick up the piece she dropped. Being in a tip of her surroundings, she bumps right into me. S Sorry. It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sari clutches the desk beside her to support herself, knees shaking. I'm a little clumsy today. Yeah, don't say! Let's sit down, Sayori. Yeah. I grab Sayori's arm and help her set out the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh! Sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. Sure, I'll like it. 
Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and bottles, all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle is starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel this friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off of my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done, I open up and in come my friends. And they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the towel between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends. It's my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Holy crap! Sorry, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. Literally giving everything about yourself away. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best! I'm gonna keep writing until I d Don't get ahead of yourself! Sarah's so had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times, but seeing the patch in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. <laughs> hmm. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one. I can't really say it's any better either. Phew. You what? Eh. Oh, anything that isn't a train wreck, I'll take it a train wreck? God damn it. Train wreck. I'll take us a win. I get that feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey, what makes you. Wait, maybe that was a couple? <laughs> Glad to see someone recognizes my experience. Well then, keep practicing and maybe you'll be as good as me someday. That's. Uh, something tells me Natsuki could completely miss the point. <laughs> Babe, I know this game! I know the hints that this game is dropping! I am not looking forward to it! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Eh? You think so? Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. 
this area as a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know. But honestly, how can someone so... er... fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Ouch! Ow! Ugh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say we each take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh, yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Amy likes my... No, 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 I, no, I do know about this one. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Inky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. But if her friends start to like spiders too, that's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. That just makes me think that she just doesn't like Yuri. <laughs> Not bad, right? Eh, it's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I am just... I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think this was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogs. It helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how it's about how everyone thinks my That doesn't matter. It could be about anything. I wrote to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people found out, they make fun of you or think less of you. That just makes people stupid! cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Yes! 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 Okay, fine. She gets this win out of me. <laughs> I'll give her that much. Well, you're definitely right. At least, I can relate to that. I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best after all. <laughs> eh. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow, too, so look forward to it. And Yuri. Let's see what, what you've written for today. Hmm. Well done, Cory. Your skills are already improving. Really? Thanks, Yuri. Coming I mean, from you, that means a lot. Eh, it's nothing. I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers. I know you're new to this, so don't worry so much if it seems like you can't get your poem to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. reason why she's protective of herself. At least from what I've heard. I've never done her storyline. Actually, to be fair, I've only actually ever done Yuri's storyline. 
I never actually put the proper time to do all the storylines, so yeah. Certainly an interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that, if you'd like to read. Of course. This is the poem you wrote for today. Yuri nods and Timothy hands me her poem. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the sc scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. Unordinary? Unordinary. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hunger curiosity. The raccoon, my urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to, fo taken to following me. We say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic... Parl... Pavlo... Pavlovian condition. Classic Pavlonian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself. Again. <sighs> um... I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style, using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So, I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Huh. That's funny. Hmm? Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? About someone being ridiculed for a strange interest? Eh, she... she did? Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into, as long as you're not hurting anybody. She... she's right. I mean... Does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have that in common. Okay, fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I see the ship fuel. I see the ship fuel. That's... Well, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. I so that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Uh, please don't tell her I said that. <laughs> don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I, I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. Okay, everyone! We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room... <clears throat> Refresh. Ugh. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ah, uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We don't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all. But that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Uh, sorry, 
I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? Huh. Um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Even each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's putting it all on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't... You didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. Not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. Uh, I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. To be fair, performing like that in front of an audience is not easy. Especially if you've never done it before. I was in band for seven years! I'm used to it! <laughs> oh, and choir for four! Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys? No, say Yuri. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. Yeah, I'm going to be ending the stream soon myself. I'll probably end this day, save it, and call it. Hello. It? Oh, hey, Fluffy! Hi. You're going Hello. to have some fucking fun editing this! Oh, joy. Oh, oh no! Hello, Alex. Y Howdy. Just, I, I, you'll, I, I, you'll see when you go through the VOD. Okay. Because I made some way too obvious jokes at my expense. Also, a shit ton of thirst jokes. I mean, it can't be any worse than... Why are so many people obsessed with stealing my balls? No, it's worse. Yeah, no, no, no. Well, I'll be sure to possibly clip those as well. <sighs> Actually, I'm surprised nobody did. Oh yeah, also the fact that I've been voice acting this entire fucking thing. Speaking of, I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible- I was asked to do the- And of course more people show up! Why do more people always show up at the end of my streams? Well, it's supposed to be I... the end! I, I mean, to be fair, in my defense, I was busy with stuff and we wrapped up uh, things- Fair. Like, a little bit ago, and then CJT found out that- his game did page downloading <laughs> We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. If it all takes us standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yurki... Yur Yurki? Yurki. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. I'm like a piece of jerky now. I'm hungry. <laughs> Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. 
The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Because I did that cough, it actually kind of threw my throat off a bit. Suki is the worst for my throat. Well, maybe, but... Looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Oh. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. All right. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. Your turn! Yes! Yes! Look upon the evil that you gave to me on day one! <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, when an entire horde of girls looks at you disappointed because you're going to turn all of them down. That's not evil. Um, depending on the context, join it. Maybe? Joining a club in this case. Down Yuri. Yuri is too adorable. Yes. <laughs> uh, I, I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going in the going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. N no way! Monica. Strange ideas of evil. Yes I do! I won't deny that. <laughs> but usually it involves some form of emotional manipulation. I missed what you said. Very tame, in my opinion. Oh, uh, oh no! Don't forget, I, I've played. I don't know if you've heard it, but I've played Demonophobia. Hmm. Never heard of it. Look it up at your own risk. Why not? Okay. Again, your own risk. Monica. This is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. I want this day to end! <laughs> That's all I'm trying to do. Just get to just get to the end of the day and save it. The way they fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. So Yuri looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the, re the re re recitation? Reci recita there. Reci <laughs> there. Four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just yeah, hoping to set a good she'd example. done it before. You are so late on so many moments of that. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have fun with that. Yes, yeah, so you're going to have a lot of fun with the editing. Are you ready to go next, eh, Yuri? And just Yuri, just, just up and at him. Uh, I'll go next. What? Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... <laughs> Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri! 
It's called... After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure, and she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the wildfire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Something that I absolutely believe should be let out. Good agree. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. Again! I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Suri so hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori, it's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Uh, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. <laughs> it's your poem, so it'll come out the best what, best that way. I see, I see. Okay, then... Sari begins her poem. Somehow, it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. I think I s originally streamed Doki Doki before I started dating her. So this is very... Oh. Yeah, this is oh. very new for her. She oh, doesn't sweet. know what's coming. Oh, sweet marshmallow summer child. Oh, I, I won't make my comment that I was thinking of saying. Oh no, I've been making some pretty oblivious drops here and there. I mean, the game makes one already. I'm gonna make poems until I die! Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I was just gonna say, you know, with Yuri, you can believe that she might just be possessed when she's reading a poem. Ugh. I'm gonna have to find... Just apply it to like everything in the dang video. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> then again, my reactions well, might be more than enough. Like there's actually a theory. It's the truth. A theory. Just a game theory. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she liked my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes, and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. <laughs> even Cory liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of that delivery. Eh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. Nope. Especially since I also intend to act- I actually do aim to try and get the good ending for this game. Think there's multiple endings in this version? There's multiple- multiple endings in the original! Oh, yeah, there was. I just never, uh, I never put the time and effort into going for it because I streamed it once, got the ending, and it just kind of stopped there because it's just like, eh. No, now it's like, oh, hey, there's more, there's new content and whatever in this game. It's like, okay. 
If I'm diving back into this, I owe myself yeah, I, I to go and get it, the good ending. I played it once just as me playing it, and then I watched other people do the other endings. Oh no, like... There's a secret ending... Sorry, there's a secret epilogue ending. Yeah. I did that. Okay. You gotta do that. Alright. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know? Okay! Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm! Don't make me go before Cory. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Cory lower everyone's sta- Ow! <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, for the record, I did, like, you know at the start of the game how the the MC is, like, really reluctant to join this? You may have noticed I actually used my name. So it's just like, whenever the protagonist is just like, I don't do a lot of writing, I just showed, I just showed the screen about all my writing. So like, just feel, feel free to have like, that slide across the screen or something as you edit this. In other words, Monica knows you're lying. No, she, I'm not lying. Because I, I'm, I mean, I'm talking into a mic. Like, she's aware. I'm speaking into a mic. So, technically, because of how the game runs, she'd be able, she would be hearing me right now. Technically. Anyways. True enough. Nice. And four. All four water bottles. Because her voice just... Uh, her voice just... Natsuki's voice just fucks with my throat. Hey. Might as well let Cory lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki. It's fine. It's fine. I might as well get it over with. It's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and sit in front of the, step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward as they are literally tallest to shortest and biggest boobs to shortest boobs. Hello, Markiplier. <laughs> I've been waiting to drop that this entire game so far. <laughs> I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. So I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then, that just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah. <clears throat> Five! Cause thirst! Oh, that's not as smooth as water. <laughs> and now I regret. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. I'm, I'm leaving that comment alone. A poem? <clears throat> a poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Hmm. Anyway, a poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. 
It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She hops back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. Better not make me do that again. Eh, Baka. <laughs> ah, well, do we at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. When it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. <sighs> yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up. Let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day! I can't wait! I can do this. I can do this. Alright. Stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sierra and Monica. I'll do my best to get through it. Uh, if it's for the sake of the club. And impressing Monica. And I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep! Look at you two! Always going home together like that! It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. You make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Cory. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. Today, Sayori's being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I, I mean... Sayori fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> well... No, I'm going for the good ending, so I have to explicitly focus on each character. Sayori, do you think it would ditch you for Yuri? Eh? But, she's so beautiful and smart. Jeez. I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Cory. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it, so... Sayori, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure it out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point of speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm. The conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy, too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? Who knows? All right. Yo, I love comments so much. stream here. So, oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. You're, you, I know you're going to absolutely enjoy the VOD, Fluffy. Oh, I will. <clears throat> Just knowing how evil you can be, 
I know, I know exactly what's going to be happening. Anyways, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please don't forget to uh, follow, or if you're feeling generous, subscribe. But the only thing I'll ever ask of you, of course, is let other people know about the channel. Friends, family, those who may be interested, because the more the channel grows, the more I'll be able to give back to you guys. Uh, if you wish to join the Discord, you can always type in exclamation Discord in the chat below. And as always, I'm the Moonlight Soldier, and I'll see you all next time.